Hey guys, back with another video on how to set up a basic kind of front backend and database for an application that you're building uh, for like web web stuff, either front and back end, whatever. Um, I guess this is technically full stack. When I first got out of my coding course, they didn't actually teach us how to do this. They just gave us templates and then we had to fill out the templates with projects. So this took me a minute to figure out and I found no real clear uh, you know, no real clear instructions online on how to get all this set up. It took me quite some time. So here's just a quick way how to do it. So I made a folder that's going to hold my API and my client. In here, I made each of these for my, of course, my API and client. We're going to open up Git Bash, which I don't have a tutorial on how to set up, but I'm sure you could find one online. So when we come into our dummy app, you'll see that there's the API and client. We're going to CD into the dummy app API first. We're going to go ahead and get in it. Um, this is just so we have that little master thing so we can have our version control, so on and so forth. Now what we're going to do is we're going to type in npx express-generator. Oh yeah, also this is assuming you're using express, mongoose, and react, which are just the ones that I feel the most comfortable with, and mongodb for the database. Uh, yeah, so anyway, so we're going to go ahead and type npx express generator and then our API name. So, I guess this is going to make another file, like another folder inside of this one. Uh, I haven't figured out how to do that yet. I probably should have just npx express generated in my original folder without making these. So I'm going to cd dot dot out of here. And I'm going to delete these. So I have something to get bash windows. So we're going to go ahead and npx express dash generator and we're going to do dummy uh, app API. Go ahead and hit enter. We're going to let that load. Cool. Now we have that. So now we're going to go ahead and cd into the dummy app API. And then we're going to get in it. All right. Awesome. So if we go to, or I guess it's code dot, just so we could open this file. Let me close these other ones so we don't get confused here. You're going to see you already have your package JSON and a couple little files in here. So this was kind of confusing to me too because I didn't know how this was set up. Uh, if you come over to www, that's where you could change your port. I changed mine to 9000 so that my front and back end are working on different ports. Uh, as for the rest of this, it's pretty much already set up. Uh, it's pretty easy. So that's that's the basics there with that. And then I'm going to close this. We're going to cd dot dot out of there. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to do npx create react app. And we're going to go ahead and do the app name, which will be dummy app client. I don't know what that go. This one takes a minute, but you can see it right there. So this is just going to take a second. This I actually do need. 
so while we're waiting, um, pretty much what this is doing, I'm going to go ahead and open another git bash window just so we can keep working. Pretty much all that's doing is just setting up all the base files and everything just like the other one. Um, so we're going to go ahead back into the API in the second git bash window. And we're going to do npm install, which is just going to take care of our dependencies. Awesome. So if we open this again, you'll see now it has a package lock.json, which is just showing all the dependencies. Now in our API, there are a few things we're going to want. So like we're going to want to npm install express, or rather, I think it already has that, but I just did it anyway. npm install mongoose, definitely going to want mongoose. Now the other terminal, we're going to cd into the client. We're going to do npm install there as well. Sorry if I'm doing a lot of back and forth, but it just makes it easier. Otherwise, this video will be like 50 minutes long. All right, so I think that's everything I wanted for the uh, API. We're actually going to install npm install cores as well. Now, as to what cores is, I'm not fully sure. It's something about like cross sending data. I don't know. I just know we need it. And as far as anyone's ever told me, I don't need to understand everything. I just need to know where it needs to be. So we do want to put cores in there. On this one, we're going to npm install. I just want to make sure that it has React. So we're going to go ahead and throw React on there. Uh, I think it might already have it, which is why it's taking a second there. But it looks like it's going good. Great. We're going to npm install. Um, React Bootstrap. So I do like Bootstrap. And I think that's everything that we really need for right now. I'm just going to show you guys the basics. Um, it's also good practice for me. That's why I'm putting all these things in here right now. Awesome. So then what you're going to do is you're going to go to. Uh, MongoDB, and you can just type in MongoDB Atlas. Boom. That's how you get there. Or this is the documentation. Let's see how we can get you guys there. I don't know. I just went to MongoDB.com. See if that'll work. Yeah, I guess this just looks different on mine. So anyway, you're gonna hit try free. You're gonna fill out all your information, yada yada. Uh, I already did all this, so it's just gonna have you select what you know what you're using it for, uh, if you want the free one or not. And I'm gonna go ahead and just log in with my. Great. So I already made a cluster. You'll have to click create new one, and it'll take a couple minutes to spin up. Uh, once it does spin up, you're going to come here and click connect. You're going to hit connect your application, and you're going to see this. Now, it will be confusing if you hit include full driver code. None of this is actually helpful to us whatsoever, so don't do that. You're just going to want to take this. Um, it'll ask you to make like an admin account and other things on here, so just make sure you remember your password. And we're going to go ahead and copy that. Now when we come over to our API, we're going to go ahead and open this up. I don't think I have it open yet. Awesome. All right, so we're going to go to app.js is where <clears throat> this would go. Now I'm going to pull up my other one just so I have 
the fully done one to show you guys. This is app. Sorry, I'm getting kind of lost in these windows. Yeah, so that's the dummy one. This is the real API that I already had. So this is the kind of code you're going to use. So we're going to come over here. And we can actually just throw it right under the bottom here. We're going to do mongoose.connect. We're going to open that up. Now, in theory, you would just do that. And then because of the way that uh, Atlas is now, we're actually going to need these right here too, or it won't accept it. So we're just going to go ahead and paste those in there. I mean, you can't, you guys can't paste it. You'll have to type it out. Now, do I know what these are? Absolutely not. I don't know what this URL parser thing is. I don't know what unified topology is. I just know if you don't have these two, it's not going to work. And then we're going to set up a, a simple little quick console log just to show us that it did connect to the database. So you can just do request res arrow function console log connected to the database. Now I already am connected to a database. Um, this one's connected to my other cluster. So I can't show you guys that. But just make sure that you replace password with whatever password you had. Make sure that you change this. It will put your username in for you. If it doesn't, make sure you do. So these are the, us the uh, usernames and passwords for your admin account that you made on MongoDB. And then for the database name, you could put whatever you want. This is uh, not your cluster name or anything. It already has your cluster over here. So if your database name, you could just put whatever your application is. And that's pretty much it. The only other advice I could give you guys is this is the dummy API, is to also npm install um, dot env. And the reason for this is if you leave this thing in the code, then if other people are using your code or like, you know, not using your code, but basically someone who can access your site or whatever can poke around in the code if they hit inspect and in theory can find this. And as such, we'll have your admin password and login for your database. So with .env, that lets us make a .env file. And so in that .env file, we can actually just do database connection and have database connection equal this code here. Boom, like that, assuming this was changed and that was changed. And then we would come back over to our app and we would change it to do <clears throat> we will need require cores, by the way. I'll do that after, otherwise I'm just going to confuse you guys. Um, where did I put it? Here. We're going to need a really simple, just require.env forward slash config. That'll let it know to how to process our env. And then we can take this and do process dot env dot database uh, what did I mean db dot connection hmm. 
think it's because I'm not supposed to use dashes. Voila. And that will just keep this file hidden from other people, so you could pass this through and no one can access your username, password, and all that. So that is pretty much that. I don't think there's anything else. Oh yeah, the cores. So you're gonna need cores, so you're gonna wanna go ahead and require cores. So I'm just gonna snag this from my old code. And then we're gonna wanna do app.usecores as well. I threw mine here, I don't think it matters where you put it. And that's enough to get you set up so you have a basic database, API, and front end that you can work with. I'm gonna close this since, you know, it doesn't really matter. And just to show you how it works, so this is my CRM that I'm using, or making rather. Uh, so we just do npm start. So you see now it says connected to the database, which is what it says after it runs mongoose connect. So we are in fact hooked up to the database now. And that's pretty much it. So hope that helped you guys. It was pretty hard for me to figure out how to set up the basics. And so it took me like hours of researching to find out I needed like five lines of code, which I feel like is usually how it is, right? Like I'll spend hours and hours and hours like looking up all these different things and like getting confused by, uh, you know, MongoDB saying like include full drivers, seeing all this and thinking I needed it when in actuality I didn't need any of that. I just needed like Mongoose Connect the link and then like these two things right here. So I got thrown all in a loop. Um, hopefully this helps you guys when you're setting up your kind of like basic foundations. I'm sure there's better ways. I'm pretty new so I'm just doing what works for me uh, and I just build on it as I go. So have fun making apps guys. Uh, if you have questions you can leave them in the comments. Hopefully I can help you out and have a great day.